from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. While it may be a place to go in an emergency, this time University Hospital had a pressing matter itself outside its front door. A fire broke out this morning at a construction site just steps away from the building of the hospital. Katrina Weber reports firefighters had to work quickly and keep it from spreading. Flashing lights here in the medical center are nothing new. They just usually don't arrive on more than two dozen fire trucks at a time. When we arrived, we could see an active fire. We did call for a second alarm, obviously because of the size of the structure. That fire was in a fenced off construction site on Medical Drive, just outside University Hospital's doors. Firefighters quickly responded to the 5.30 a.m. call and got to work both outside and inside the building. We did go all the way up into the hospital, up several floors to make sure there was no extension into the main hospital building. What they did not have to do was evacuate any patients. They were able to keep the flames, which broke out in an unattached and out of use skywalk contained to just that area. Although it may not look that way from this angle, the fire department says there's actually about four feet of space between the area that burned and the hospital itself. And they say those flames never reached the building. Still, the fire did create a scare, both for those fighting it and others in the area. Investigators believe it started when something went wrong during a demolition project. What happened is some of the construction workers this morning as they were doing their demo work accidentally sparked that fire, possibly with a cutting torch. By daylight, construction crews had fired up their heavy equipment and were able to go back to work. Because the walkway was being torn down, there was no real damage done. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, this is a weird day. It was like warm and then it got a little chilly and then it's back to warm and raining. It's uh, a cold front coming through, is that right? That's the idea. This front uh, kind of has a mind of its own though. It's still, it's still to our north. It's trying to hold up a little bit. I do think it moves through San Antonio. It's gonna bring us some rain chances. In fact, it's doing so right now. The radar shows us that we've got some thunderstorms out there. We had these move through San Antonio a little bit earlier, so some good downpours around town. We've got some wet roads out there for sure, but those storms now moving north up into Comal County around Canyon Lake getting a pretty good uh, dousing of rain there and then on the north side of San Antonio we're still seeing a few lingering showers so Stone Oak up along 281 and then along I-10 there on the northwest side. I still think we could see a few more showers and storms but uh, by the time we get into the evening hours things will quiet down a little bit uh, and then our next best chance of rain is going to arrive Wednesday morning. Here's a little wider look at uh, what we've got going on. Some showers across our eastern counties too. These are lifting north. See a little bit more development off to the north and west as well. We again could see a few rumbles of thunder today. Temperature wise, the front is through places like Comfort and Curva where we're in the 60s. Canyon Lakes down to 59 now and that's probably some rain cool there as well. But still into the 70s here in Bear County. We're still waiting for that cool down, and I do think eventually we'll see those numbers drop a little bit into the afternoon, perhaps into the 50s. Uh, it'll certainly be cooler to the north and much warmer to the south. So the forecast calls for temperatures to fall off into the 50s today. It will get a little bit chilly overnight. Rain chance is also tapering off some. Again, they pick back up as we get into Wednesday. We're going to talk more about that forecast and how much rain we could receive out of all this coming up in just a few minutes. Ursula. Thank you, Justin. This noon, a pair of children are safe after an Amber Alert was issued in Dallas. The children found in a northeast Dallas area and a suspect is now in custody. On Sunday, the children's mother was found murdered in an apartment. The children gone. It's believed they were in danger. Today, KXAS in Dallas reporting that 33-year-old Johnny Ray Palmore was taken into custody after being found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was hospitalized. He is now in critical condition. But as we said, those children are safe. A man nursing a gunshot wound and his stepson is facing an aggravated assault charge. Police say late last night they were called to the 9300 block of Scotty Oaks. That's in northwest Bear County. Officers say a father and a stepson got into a fight at some point. The stepson picked up a gun and shot his father. He was taken to the hospital in a gunshot wound to his leg. The stepson was taken into custody. 
We have an update now on a deadly crash on the west side. Police have now identified the victim. Officers tell us Ruben Alejandro Cisneros was killed in that crash early Wednesday morning. Police say Cisneros was driving east in the 1400 block of West Highway 90 near Zarzamora when he crashed into a barrier. It's not clear what caused that crash. We're still waiting to learn the teen's identity after she was killed in a southwest side crash last night. Police say a driver was going south along Southwest Loop 410 when they lost control, overcorrected, and slid sideways. The vehicle went down an embankment and rolled, and a woman was thrown from the SUV and pronounced dead at the scene. A man was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. A man recovering in the hospital after a motorcycle crash on the northwest side. Police say that motorcyclist was riding his bike in the 1500 block of Waverly Avenue just after 2 o'clock in the morning when he started driving the wrong way. He ended up losing control and hit two parked cars. He was not wearing a helmet. KZAC community organizers in the city of San Antonio are launching the student video PSA contest once again in efforts of raising awareness about teen dating violence. Student filmmakers will showcase their perspective about the taboo topic. Students can produce a 20 second PSA encouraging their peers to be against teen dating violence in their schools and communities. The PSA must be PG and the deadline for submitting the videos and the competition entry forms is April 23rd. You can visit our website, kset.com, for more information. Small businesses, the backbone of San Antonio's economy. That's why Leadership San Antonio is hosting a Ramp Up Your Business event this week. So Ramp Up is an opportunity for small businesses to come, network, and talk to the leaders in Leadership San Antonio so we can hopefully help them further accelerate their small business in the economy of San Antonio. Small business owners will be able to get diverse perspectives from leaders all across the Alamo City. This includes people from nonprofit organizations, marketing, independent contractors, and even people from Fortune 100 companies. The ramp up event taking place Wednesday at the Maestro Entrepreneurship Center. It's on the city's west side. It is from one until two. If you would like to attend, you can register or rather you are required to register online at leadershipsa.org. A lot of folks may have rodeo fever, but fiesta season will soon be here, and the Texas Cavaliers are already gearing up, making a big announcement this morning. They announced that the Grand Marshal for the organization's River Parade will be Tony Parker. The theme this year is 2020 Vision. Each year it takes over 12,000 man hours to make it all happen. We are, are setting up chairs, we're decorating floats, so we're uh, we're putting a lot of effort there, and it's all to support the children's charities in San Antonio. Last year, we gave uh, 67 charities, $1.5 million, and we're hoping to exceed that this year. Uh, we're going to give grants to 69 charities and, and again, hopefully exceed that $1.5 million mark. They do some great work. Congratulations to Tony Parker. The charitable honoree this year will be Smith Zoo School. The Texas Cavaliers also unveiled their Fiesta Medal this morning. This year's parade is on April 20th at 7 p.m. And speaking of the Spurs, they could use some Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili and Tim Duncan. They got crowned by the Kings Saturday, and this could not end up, or this could end up being a history-making rodeo road trip. Not the kind of history you want, either. Not in a good way. China is still working to contain the coronavirus. We have details on a rise in deaths after the break. Concerns over the coronavirus are growing more each day as the numbers of those dead and dying just keeps getting bigger. It's the deadliest day so far with a jump in recorded fatalities, plus new confirmed cases on board that cruise ship docked and quarantined off the coast of Japan. ABC's Julia McFarlane has more. A new blow in the fight against coronavirus. China's health commission announcing the highest number of people killed from the virus in a single day. 97 casualties on Sunday. This as the total number of deaths climbs towards the 1,000 mark. Meanwhile, bad news for those passengers stuck on the Diamond Princess cruise ship off the coast of Japan, as dozens of people on board test positive for the virus. Meaning now at least 135 out of 3,700 passengers have caught the virus, including at least 23 Americans. One of them is Rebecca Frazier from Oregon, currently being treated in a hospital in Japan. You never think that something like this is going to happen when you're just on vacation, living life. 
So yeah, it was pretty shocking. It doesn't even feel like a cold, to be perfectly honest. I wouldn't have known that there was anything wrong with me. Um, if they hadn't tested me. Many of those on board the ship are concerned about catching the virus from others. The crew's currently on a two-week quarantine period. The president of Princess Cruises at pains to stress the situation is under control. The Japanese government and Princess have both supplied additional resources and more doctors and nurses who have now boarded the ship. Experts in mental health and pharmacy will also be joining shortly. The cruise line announcing they will refund the full fare for all guests, including their air travel, hotel and expenses as a result of the crisis on board. Meanwhile, another flight arranged by the State Department bringing back 65 people evacuated from Wuhan, arriving at a marine base in Miramar. Medical staff from the CDC carrying out screenings and preparing the new arrivals for their time in federal quarantine. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. We want to take a live look outside because it is going to require some apparel. You're probably going to need an umbrella mm -hmm. and a raincoat today. Mm -hmm. Both of them. And it will get a little bit chillier later today, so you want the coat with you, as uh, you mentioned earlier. So the, the aquifer is down a tenth of a foot to 672.3. We could use a little bit of rain. We've got quite a bit in the forecast. In fact, mold as a result, though, because we are seeing rain, is up into the high category, 1710. Ash is moderate. We'll talk about rainfall and how much we could see coming up. I think it's National Umbrella Day. It is. I was excited. I looked on the KSET mobile weather app, and there's rain right around where I'm living. So you I needed said, some, huh? Yeah, needed some bad. Yeah, the rain's falling pretty good up north of San Antonio. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get some more off and on showers today. I think we'll see a little bit of a break. But what I'm looking to is early Wednesday morning. That's our window, I think, where we could get some pretty heavy rain. So let's start with the radar. And right now, we've got a couple of thunderstorms, a couple of showers north of town. We had a pretty good area move through San Antonio. Dumps pretty good rain here in town. But now it's north of us, Comal County, moving up towards Blanco and Hayes County. We've seen a few lightning strikes with this, but uh, nothing severe. Now, I will say there is potential for a couple strong storms today. We've seen a few of those. I don't think it's a, just a, a big problem, but I do want to point that out, and we'll look at the uh, chance for that here in just a second. Let's zoom in a little bit closer here on San Antonio, and you saw those showers and storms lift north through the city. Now just a few leftover showers up there uh, around Bulverde, north of Timberwood Park. And these are more or less working their way up 281. Still getting some rain there around Canyon Lake as well. Uh, when we're talking 24-hour rainfall, rainfall totals here within the last few hours from these showers and storms, uh, not a ton of rain, but enough that it makes it pretty nice, maybe up close to an inch there around Canyon Lake. That's a good number, and I think we could see one to two inches when it's all said and done with these uh, with the storm system that's uh, coming through. So here's the big picture. We've got one little piece of energy that's working through North Texas. Now some heavy snow up across the Texas Panhandle, so they're getting walloped again with the wintry weather. And then there is a frontal boundary that sits right about there. It's just to our north, and it is moving slow. Uh, so some places in our viewing area are behind the cold front and much cooler. Out ahead of it, we're still warm and humid, even here in San Antonio. There you see the numbers, 33 Lubbock, 36 in Abilene, 41 in San Angelo. But we're still sitting at 72 on the other side of that front. Uh, it's right along that front where there is that chance for a few strong storms. We've got a marginal risk for severe weather today. That's low end. If we see anything, it'll be some gusty winds, maybe some hail. And I don't even know that we'll see that. Some rumbles of thunder, probably, but uh, strong storms, eh, the chances are pretty low. Outside right now, we've got cloudy skies, a little bit of rain coming down, 72 degrees at the airport. Two point is at 68. Southeast Julie winds at about 10. Here around Bear County, we're still in the low 70s, but you go north behind the front, 65 Comfort, 64 in Kerrville, 58 right now in Fredericksburg. And this cool air will slowly move into the, to the area today. I do think we'll see some falling temperatures here in San Antonio. Uh, by midday today, where we are right now, some showers and storms, but by 6 o'clock, the front moves south, and we'll see a little bit of a break in the action, and uh, maybe a few more showers tomorrow morning. And then, as I mentioned, it's really Wednesday when we start to see those rain chances really ramp up again, and this is uh, midnight uh, Wednesday, and then 3 a.m. Wednesday, we've got widespread showers and storms, and that's when we could see some of our heaviest rain. By 7 o'clock Wednesday morning, this is moving out. We'll get some clearing, I think, late on Wednesday. And when we're talking rainfall totals here, all said and done, maybe one to 
two inches, generally speaking here around San Antonio, half an inch to an inch out west. And then as you get north and east of San Antonio, two inches plus. Uh, so this is going to be a healthy rainmaker, I think, for a lot of us. 63 degrees by 2 o'clock, 59 by 4 o'clock. Chances of rain starting to subside a little bit as we get into this evening. And then tomorrow we're talking about a 40% chance of showers, but it will be cloudy and cooler. There could be some drizzle around. Just one of those type days. 60 on Wednesday with a 70% chance of rain, mainly in the morning. Sun's back out Thursday. Valentine's Day looks good. 58 and then another chance of rain on Saturday. Going to need you all week. Please stay on the job. Yes, I will do that. OK. Yep. All right, new today at 5. For the first time in 20 years, the Food and Drug Administration is putting new food label restrictions into place. From what's listed to the way it's listed, we have a breakdown of the four changes aimed at improving your health. It's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Hey, coming up next, the Spurs are coming off that bad loss to the Kings. They need a win. Oh, so desperately tonight in Denver would be a nice place to get one. And it was the kickoff of the first weekend for the XFL Football League. Some quirky things going on in that league. We got that for you. Just the kickoff itself. Look at that. Strange. As said, you know, Spurs are off to pretty much their worst rodeo road trip ever after what happened in Sacramento over the weekend. A place the schedule looked like they could actually get a win, but that didn't happen. DeJounte Murray missed a triple-double by one rebound and one assist, scoring 17 points, nine rebounds, nine assists. Right behind him was Bryn Forbes, who had 16 points, including four three-pointers. He kicked the Spurs within three at the half, but in the second half, the Spurs were outscored 70-53 to behind Buddy Hild, who scored 31 on nine three-pointers to become the fastest player to reach 800 career three-pointers in 296 games. The Spurs had to do without their leading score, DeMar DeRozan. He got frustrated. So he was gone from this last six minutes. It didn't matter since the Spurs were already down 13 at the time. They fall 122-102. The Kings hit 19 threes. The Spurs only hit seven after the game. Pop, in his own way, called out his team. As I said before, we have a problem sustaining a good play for 48 minutes. You know, the end of the third quarter, last four minutes, it's a great game and get out scored 17 to two with the second team out there in the last four minutes of the third quarter. That's unacceptable. So, you know, those guys got to man up and play better. That's the bottom line. All right, they got to man up. Spurs now 22 and 30 on the season. And in order to finish at 500, you have a shot at the postseason at all. They got to go 19 and 11 at least in their final 30 games in the regular season. One of the ways to make that happen could be the combination of playing point guards DeJounte Murray and Derek White together more often to add a spark to the Spurs offense in the fourth quarter. Well, you know, I'm, I'm looking for guys that are playing well, and they were both playing well. That's why they were out there. But, you know, the Kings did a good job. They're moving the ball great. I think Luke's doing a great job. They're playing aggressively. They're, they're really sharing it, uh, enjoying playing with each other. I think they're doing a great job. All right, so two more games on the rodeo road trip before the All-Star break, then two more after the break. So they're at Denver tonight, and then tomorrow night they are at Oklahoma City and then they get that long break for All-Star Weekend. Hey, this coming weekend, the NBA will hold its annual All-Star Game, and you can expect a weekend to be filled with many tributes to Kobe Bryant. There's actually a mural here in San Antonio put up last week to honor Kobe. The Wing Restaurant Wing It out in Universal City has the mural up done by a local artist, and fans have been heading out there ever since. It was unveiled Sunday's All-Star Game will also honor the Laker great. Here's what you can expect when you watch that game. It's a new format. So the first three quarters will start at 0-0, but still be 12 minutes long. Team, yeah, Team Giannis and Team LeBron will aim to win each quarter. Both teams' cumulative score will be determined after the third quarter. This, this just gets kind of confusing after a while. The final target score will be the leading team's total cumulative score after three quarters and adding 24 points. The first team what? to reach the final target score will win All-Star Game. The game can end with a made basket or a made free throw. No game clock in case that throws for it. What? Yeah, I, I read this about three times, and I'm like, yeah, I got to see what? it, I guess. I'm going to have to watch all, right. all this and figure it all out. This is a mess. <laughs> Hey, the XFL licked off this week, kicked off this weekend. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, they were taking a licking and kept, kick, kept kicking. Yeah, some guys did because it's a tough sport out there. They were uh, pretty some quirky little things going on. You see the kickoff right there? 
okay, so they're lined up way down the field, and they can't really start going until the guy catches the ball. So that's, that's one quirky thing. And another difference is the in-game interviews, which makes things a little awkward when a kicker just missed a field goal and has to do an interview about what happened when, out, when you were out there. Defenders won their game and have been called the best football team in D.C. The Houston, wow, that's, that's hurts. The Houston Roughnecks won their game. Their logo is basically the Houston Oilers logo. New York Guardians won yesterday afternoon, and the Dallas Renegades had over 17,000 fans within their first game, which they lost to St. Louis. The Battle Hawks, 15-9. Dallas failed to get into the end zone, so it seems like the Renegades are much different than the Cowboys, and they had 17,000 fans. Why yeah. is it that nowadays you have to reinvent the wheel? I, that's, that's a good question. They're just trying. The interviews are interesting. they got to work on their delay because there was some. Yeah, saw that. Some really bad language getting out over the <laughs> airways that they, that they didn't catch. So they got, they got to fix that problem. But the interviews are kind of interesting on the side. Okay. And the, you hear all the coaches talking. And the All-Star game also. Let's, yeah, let's I don't, I, that, I, take the I'm, rules and throw them up in the I'm air not, and see which ones land up right. They're trying to do what they can to make sure people are interested in watching. Interesting. So. All right. If your job has you stressed out, put a plant on your desk. Yeah. Why it could help ease your worries. That's next. Less than 24 hours until the New Hampshire primary. What do the latest polls tell us? And what are the candidates themselves saying to attack each other? I'm Trevor Alden, Manchester. That story coming up. President Donald Trump preparing a $4.8 trillion budget plan. Details expected to be released today. The plan reportedly includes previously rejected spending cuts and it leaves Social Security and Medicare benefits untouched. President Trump's fiscal 2021 budget plan aims to control the trillion dollar plus deficits and balance them out. Now to the race for the White House, where the New Hampshire primary is just a day away. Senator Bernie Sanders and Mayor Pete Buttigieg are trying to gain momentum. Meanwhile, Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Elizabeth Warren are trying to stave off slipping poll numbers. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest from Manchester, New Hampshire. The nation's first primary less than 24 hours away. And the candidates have packed their schedules and sharpened their attacks. Now I'm running against some guys, Pete Buttigieg among others, who have raised campaign funds from over 40 billion, 40 billionaires. 40 billionaires. Senator Bernie Sanders still sits atop the polls, but Mayor Pete Buttigieg is surging behind him. I respect Senator Sanders, but when I hear this message go out that you're either for a revolution or you got to be for the status quo. Buttigieg also now in the crosshairs of a slipping former Vice President Joe Biden. And he's a smart guy, but he's been the mayor of a city smaller than the city we're in now. And so what has he done? What is, who has he pulled together? But the vice president may be also bleeding supporters to a different moderate. Senator Amy Klobuchar riding a strong debate performance, now seeing her biggest crowds yet. Uh, we have had this incredible journey um, over the last few days in New Hampshire. Of course, starting with the debate, uh, which... Uh, which went pretty well. And Senator Elizabeth Warren needing a strong showing here in New Hampshire, touting $2 million in fundraising she's received since Iowa. And as the Democratic candidates finish up their events in New Hampshire, their future opponent is in town tonight, too. President Trump expected to fill up an arena for a rally. Some of his supporters have been camping out since yesterday morning. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. A big winter storm that battered Britain with hurricane force winds and heavy rains now making its way eastward. Winter storm Sierra has already pummeled countries like Sweden and it has left some damage behind. People in Brussels woke up this morning after Sierra passed through. There were reports of two deaths, one in Sweden, the other in the Czech Republic. Two of Europe's busiest airports in Frankfurt, Germany and in Amsterdam, Netherlands, grounding more than 100 flights due to this storm. We don't have that kind of problem, but we do have some weird weather. Just look at some, oh, and we have a crash right there at 1604 at Bandera Road. You can see the emergency crews are on the scene, but that traffic is backed up. So if you are headed that way, pay attention and uh, you might want to look for an alternate route. We can only assume that this might be weather related. You can see the roads there in that picture are wet.
Yeah, we've seen a lot of wet roads. I was just looking at Transguide before the show. There was a couple other accidents out there. So yeah, just be careful. The roads are slick right now, and uh, we saw a good area of rain move through San Antonio just within the last hour or so, and so there's still some puddles on the roads. Let's go to the radar right now. Things have quieted down, actually. We've still got a couple showers up there. Uh, just north of Bull Verde, moving towards Bernie. These are pretty light, though. Nothing like what they were. We had some lightning strikes earlier with some of that activity. Let's zoom out here. We've got a couple more thunderstorms out in Edwards County, just south of Rock Springs, and then some showers working their way north towards Howitzville around Victoria. And uh, we'll still see a few more showers and there may be a thunderstorm or two today, but rain chances will start to come down a little bit as we get into this evening. Temperature wise, it's still warm. 72 at the airport, 67 hello to 70 Bernie stage, but you got some 60s up to the north comfort curve and cooler air is trying to slowly work its way in. And in fact, we've got temperatures in the 50s here around Canyon Lake and New Braunfels forecast calls for those temperatures to slip into the 50s this evening and notice we've brought rain chances down just a little bit 30% range. They pick back up a little bit tomorrow, but more so Wednesday. We're going to get some good rainfall and probably our best shot at some rain. Temperatures will moderate a little bit, although cool tomorrow, 53, but up to 60 on Wednesday with an 80% chance of rain. We're going to detail that entire forecast for you coming up in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Listen up, Justin. This one's for you. Exercising, eating healthy, not smoking and limiting alcohol can lead to a longer life. Yeah, I see what you eat in the morning, Justin. ABC Zena's Delicatera has more on that. Being overweight, smoking, and having chronic diseases like heart disease, cancer, or diabetes are harmful to your overall health and may limit how long you live. A new study from the British Medical Journal showed that a combination of healthy lifestyle choices can extend the years a person lives without disease. They found the more healthy activities you participate in, the greater your chances of living longer without disease. Furthermore, someone who participates in keeping a healthy body weight exercising, limiting alcohol intake, and eating healthy will have better chances of living longer than someone who only limits alcohol. So if you're tempted to skip the gym and stay at home on the couch and eat a bag of chips, think twice about it and make the healthy choices to live a longer, healthier life. With this Medical Minute, I'm Inez de la Quatera. A new study says putting plants on your desk at work could help alleviate some stress. Researchers in Japan observed electric company employees changes in stress levels. They found that employees anxiety decreased after they were able to look at a small potted plant for a few minutes every day. 27% of the employees in the study showed a significant decrease in their resting heart rate. The lead author of the study says the results suggest that if employers actively encouraged workers to take three minute nature breaks, the mental health of their employees would improve. A historic collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency has been formed. How they'll be able to study the sun and its influence on space. And speaking of history, it was a history-making night in Hollywood. Look back at the Oscars coming up. You may have noticed people are opting for face masks in areas hardest hit with coronavirus, but the Better Business Bureau is warning that con artists might use these masks to scam you. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Mattel says it will be closing two factories in Asia and one in Canada, all in an effort to reduce its manufacturing footprint and cut costs. The Barbie doll maker shut factories in both China and Indonesia last year due to weak sales. A spokeswoman for the company declined to reveal to the Wall Street Journal how many jobs would be affected by the closures. An Airbus might buy out Bombardier's $6 billion stake in the A220 jetliner program. This according to Bloomberg. Negotiations between the two companies are reportedly in advanced stages with official details speculated for release this week. Airbus has so far declined to comment. And Uber co-founder Travis Kalanick has a new project in the works. Kalanick is reportedly among one of the backers of a new 3D printed hotel startup called Habitas. The idea was born out of the Burning Man Festival and the business model has so far been tested in Mexico, Asia and Africa. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Tim Stenevec from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange.
The Better Business Bureau warning people about another scam involving the coronavirus. The Bureau says watch out for low quality counterfeit face masks. It says that some online retailers might take your money and never send you the mask. Others might just take your credit card information. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says masks actually might not be a good option for the general public anyway. British Airways says it launched the fastest subsonic flight between New York and London. It was a Boeing 747 that reached a top speed of more than 800 miles an hour. The flight in question happened on Saturday and got to its destination in just under five hours. According to Flight Radar 24, the average time for a trip from New York to London is about six hours and 13 minutes. CNN meteorologist Robert Shackelford says heavy winds from a storm help the plane go even faster than it usually would. NASA's latest mission will give us a better look at the sun. A solar orbiter was deployed late Sunday night from Cape Canaveral's Air Force Station in Florida. The spacecraft took a ride on a rocket before separating successfully. It'll provide scientists with the first ever images of the sun's poles. The collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency will allow scientists to study the sun's changing behavior. Pretty much blocked out the sun today. It's kind of warm and humid, but we're expecting some colder temperatures sometime this afternoon, aren't we? We're waiting on a cold front, which, by the way, is just, uh, just to our north. And it's going to be slightly south, and that's going to provide uh, some rain chances. As we go into later into this afternoon, but the next couple of hours, and then we'll see some cooler temperatures with that as well. 73, the high temperature today, 67 so far, the low temperature. So not a big range there. The records are 88 and 19, and we have picked up about three tenths of an inch of rainfall so far. We're going to add to that, especially as we get into Wednesday. We're going to talk more about that forecast coming up. All right, I got to apologize. Justin had, what did you have, Brussels sprouts and asparagus Ooh, for breakfast this morning? Something not for breakfast, no. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. No, we made that for dinner last night, so I'm trying to eat a little healthier. Can't say it was, you know, yeah. the best meal in the world, but I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one day out of seven ain't bad. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I'll make it two this week. All right. Yeah. Oh. Let's take a look at the radar. We've got some uh, showers and storms out there at this hour. Uh, we've been watching some of that heavier rain off to the north of San Antonio. That's starting to fizzle out a little bit, but we still got some action there in Edwards County and off towards Real County. There are some mining strikes for that, so we'll watch that storm as it works north and east. But uh, right now over rural areas and uh, probably going to move north of Lakey. Nothing severe with it yet. We have the potential of a couple strong storms here over the next couple of hours, but so far we haven't seen a whole lot of that. Here in San Antonio, you saw some of the showers develop to the south. We saw that move north, produce some pretty good rain. We picked up about three tenths of an inch at the airport. That has since dissipated and moved off to the north. And we've still got some showers across our eastern counties as well. Victoria working up towards Howitzville. And with that front still in place, there's the potential for a little bit more as we get into the afternoon, although I think we'll see a bit of a lull in the action uh, later this evening and into tonight. 24 hour rainfall totals. Really, this is what we've picked up just within the last uh, two hours or so. And there have been some decent numbers there, maybe close to an inch uh, along 281 there, 1604. And we saw a pocket uh, close to that up across uh, Canyon Lake as well. Uh, let's zoom out and I'll show you the water vapor here. And one of the reasons we're getting this good influx of moisture is we've got this area of low pressure off to the west and it's slowly moving east. You combine that with the frontal battery and the moisture that we've got in place. That's a good setup for some rain and uh, we'll see that today, tomorrow and especially Wednesday morning. Across the state, a lot of wet weather across uh, north central Texas and in fact some pretty heavy snow. Lubbock up to Amarillo. That's going to be a winter weather issue and there could be even a little bit more snow across West Texas in the coming days. For us, it's just rain and there's the frontal battery just to the north of San Antonio. It is slowly and I do mean slowly moving south. It should bring in some cooler air uh, gradually through the day today. Right now we're still at 72, but just to our north and west in San Angelo, it's 41. So it shows you the difference there with this front 51 Waco 45 right now in Dallas outside. 72 dew point is at 68 visibility improving some. We had some fog this morning and temperatures around Bear County in low 70s still. As you go north, you start to run into some of the cooler air. 64 Kerrville, 62 in Comfort and in the 50s for Can Canyon Lake and New Braunfels. As uh, we look at the bigger picture here, 
And we'll zoom out. I promise this will happen. There we go. Sometimes things work slow here. Uh, 58 degrees Fredericksburg, 54 Junction, 52 in Rock Springs. So that's some of that cooler air that's working into the hill country as well. So the future cast shows that we'll get those uh, showers and maybe a couple of storms along the front. But notice by 6 o'clock, this computer model quiets things down quite a bit. And as we go into tonight, a couple more showers. This is tomorrow morning, still some showers, maybe a storm. I think it's probably mostly showers tomorrow. And then by Wednesday morning, early Wednesday morning, we're talking midnight here, this is when our best chance of rain really starts to kick in. I think we'll see widespread rain, some good downpours pre-dawn Wednesday. And by 7 o'clock, a lot of this is starting to move out of here. And then we'll get some clearing late on Wednesday. And it clears out Thursday and Friday. Rainfall totals. Hey, maybe one to two inches here in town. That's a possibility. Generally speaking, you'll get the better numbers off to the north and east of us. So forecast for today, 63 by 2 o'clock. We'll drop it into the 50s this afternoon. Again, that cool air will gradually work its way in on northeasterly winds. And then a 40% chance of rain tomorrow, 60 on Wednesday, 70% chance of rain early in the day, and then sun Thursday and Friday. Okay, Valentine's Day. You get to cuddle up with your loved uh, one. It's looking pretty good. Cold mornings. Cold mornings. Noble yeah. weather. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> we'll be right back. This case at Rodeo Remembers is powered by the all new 2020 Chevy Silverado HD. When you're at the rodeo, you're witnessing skills that took centuries to develop, and the first horsemen to begin to figure it all out were the vaqueros. As the Spanish colonized Mexico, cattle ranching became a lucrative business, but Mexico wasn't Europe. Working large herds on vast stretches of land demanded horses, new equipment, and new techniques. Roping, branding, spurs, chaps, the modern saddle, they were all developed through trial and error by the vaqueros. To a Spanish landowner, a vaquero was simply a laborer, and many were mestizo, a Spanish term for someone with both indigenous and European descent. In early colonial Mexico, indigenous laborers faced many restrictions, and the conquistador saddle was forbidden. So out of necessity, a new style of riding developed on the haciendas. This mixture of inventiveness and masterful horsemanship formed the roots of charro culture. And as ranching moved north, the charro became the vaquero. By the 1800s, Anglo settlers began to move west into Old Mexico, and the important skills of the vaquero were embraced by a new kind of horseman. We'll talk about the rise of the cowboy on the next Rodeo Remembers. We want to take you back out to this trouble spot that's not as much trouble as earlier shown. This is at 1604 and Bandera Road, an accident here with lanes blocked off. Yeah, we understand nobody was transported, which means it wasn't that serious. It's just a big mess, and you can see the roads are wet, so that's going to cause some more problems. So pay attention if you get out there and get on the roads this afternoon. It was a night that was full of firsts at the Oscars and a big night for small film. ABC's Ramina Puga is in Hollywood with more on that historic night last night. Academy Awards was a night of memorable moments and filmmaking first. And the Oscar goes to Parasite. The history-making hit Parasite becoming the first foreign language film to take home the Oscar for Best Picture. The small South Korean film Breaking Barriers racking up award after award. Including an upset in the Best Director category, Bong Joon-ho honoring his idol Martin Scorsese during his victory speech. I loved that you said in your speech you wished that you could cut the Academy Award up in five pieces. Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> and share it with those other directors. Yeah, yeah. Would you really do that? I really love them. There were no surprises in the acting categories. And the Oscar goes to... Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt winning his first ever Acting Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Once upon a time in Hollywood, I think that's the truth. And Laura Dern taking home her first Oscar gold for Best Supporting Actress in Marriage Story. I share this with my acting heroes, my legends, Diane Ladd and Bruce Dern. And Joaquin Phoenix getting his first Oscar for his lead acting role in Joker. I've been a scoundrel in my life and ungrateful, but so many of you in this room have given me a second chance. About the only thing familiar on the movie industry's biggest stage was who wasn't on it. For the second year in a row, the Oscars going hostless. We both have hosted the Oscars before, and this is such an incredible demotion. 
<laughs> they don't really have hosts anymore. Why is that? Twitter. Parasite had the most wins for the night, followed by 1917 with three wins. And then once upon a time in Hollywood, Ford vs. Ferrari and Joker, each with two. In Hollywood, Romina Puga, ABC News. Oh, I did like 1917. Great movie. Didn't win that much last night. Well, won a few. It's all right. Well deserved. All right, let's head over to Market Square and SA Live well, on they, this Monday. They dressed down. They were all dressed yeah. up on Friday. Yeah, no what taxes. Happened? What? Oh, no. Well, she, I mean, look at how beautiful Fiona is, though, yeah. as always. Oh, thank you so much. I didn't have yeah. the village today for the whole glam look. You know, but <laughs> hey, love guys. is in the air. That's right. You see that? That is four days until Valentine's Day. One, yeah. two, three, four. That's our public service announcement. Okay, and you want to go on a really, really nice date, maybe <laughs> with your Valentine, or even for the whole family ice cream you can't go wrong with this so oh, yes joey garza the general manager from the baked bear is here tell us about these yummy treats all right so we do custom ice cream cookie sandwiches and basically you just pick your cookies all of our cookies are homemade all of our brownies are homemade also and then you choose the ice cream that goes in the middle and then whatever toppings a lot of dozen wow. flavors of cookies 13 mm. flavors of ice cream exactly including vegan cookies gluten-free cookies we also have gluten-free ice creams it's oh. a good Monday. It's a good <laughs> Monday. It's going to be getting even better. Hey, if you're going on that date, Elsa Fernandez from Eye Candy Boutique is here. Hello. What is that one thing every gal should have? A denim jacket. That Cropped comes with anything. longer. Yes. Whether you're going for Valentine's Day, date night, rodeo date, one for all. all and right. it's so true because it doesn't matter what you're wearing. Where if you, even if you're dressed up, like I could wear that over this. It's exactly. It would, it would it's it's the today's blue blazer basically. Mm -hmm. totally. Goes with anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, all right. Well, if you're looking for a fun way to get fit. Yes, indeed. Jen Tobias Trusky is there, and it's going to be kind of a kind of workout. You're going to have to work out, work off all that ice cream and pizza because it is. National Pizza Day. Oh. Well, National Pizza Day was yesterday, oh. but we are going to celebrate it today because we can and we will. <laughs> What's your favorite pizza? Let us Great know at SA Live KSAT.